Let's talk about day two of Breakout Game Convention in Toronto, and we played some amazing games. Welcome to Brains on Games. I'm Dr. Brian McDonald, and this episode we're joined once again by The Hungry Gamer. And you know that I'm actually here because I'm wearing the official garb of Canada, the toque. Yeah, all the way up from south of the border. Yeah, well, almost, almost the next border, San Jose, California. You're used to warm weather. I, you know, this is when he's been talking about how this is warm. Mm -hmm. It's cold, y'all. It's so cold. <laughs> 10, 11 degrees. That is not cold in March. <laughs> and for, for our American friends, that's about 50 degrees. That's cold. Very comfortable. Very no, comfortable. Don't not. listen to this guy. He's biased. I'm wearing a hat inside, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about day two of Breakout uh, in Toronto, which is a fantastic board game convention. And we did play some great games yesterday. And the first thing I played, and I liked it so much that I recommended it to you and Canadian Kevin, was a game that is it's going to hit Kickstarter, I think, later on this year. Yeah, I believe they said in the fall. Yeah. So yeah. it's called Lairs. What did you think of this game? Now, so first I just want to share. So this is all Brian would talk about in the morning. We, we, what were we playing? We were playing something else in this, uh, all, all that you were talking about. I don't know, we were doing something. And we played Thunder Road. Thunder Road. And it was still in my mind, the yeah. playing Lairs. Yeah. You so guys have to play Lairs. We were talking about talking about it. And so finally, I just went over just to kind of meet the people and talk. And I left, went to the restroom. I came back. And there was just, the guy was just sitting there taking a break. And I was like, hey, could, could you just show me real quick? And I made Canadian Kev come running back. He was over at Tim Hortons grabbing coffee. And we played real fast. And th the beauty of this is, when we saw Brian later, we both just stone faced. We're like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> this is that, that was the worst thing. And just his whole face—he had a mask on, so but his whole face just melted. And we're like, "No, no, we're playing, guys. It's a really fun game." It is a very, very yeah. fun game. Hidden movement. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, well, kind of hidden movement. Well, right? Dungeon crawling. Yeah, yeah. The du dungeon crawl. You you build your dungeon, however you want. You got like twenty-seven walls and. Three treasures and three monsters and a couple traps. So a two-player game where each player has a screen in front of them and they're building all their walls and traps and treasures on this map. Each player has their own dungeon and, and each player has a hero that's going to run through their opponent's dungeon. Yeah, and uh, so after you build it, you have a, a cubes that's like your, your, your stamina and some cubes are different things, whatever, it doesn't matter right now. But you're running through, finding out what's in these different places. You have your own little map you draw on, so you're drawing out what the other person's dungeon is while they're moving your figure around on theirs. It's hard, a little hard to explain without having something here, yeah. but it's just a lot of fun. So much fun. Yeah. And then, so we played the very most basic version of the game, but when this thing finally comes out, they're going to have asymmetric player abilities. They're going to have characters that level up. You've got cubes of different colors that give your hero a different ability. There's going to be secret doors and, and wall crushing traps and doors where you have to find a key in order to open them and you can bluff the other player and just put a monster back there. The monsters are going to become more yeah. powerful. This is um, such a neat little game and it takes minutes to learn. Yes, we, Kevin and I, we learned it and played a full game in like 37 minutes. And we, and we were rushing through, but it's so, even just the building of the dungeon is fun. And then you're sitting there because you don't know what's there. And I, just, I was laughing just knowing that Kevin was missing the easy path. Yeah. Like, it came in, and I had set the staircase that brings you in. And I put one of the treasures you need literally right next to the staircase, and that was the last square he found. It just was so really funny. You do find yourself wandering yeah. around the entire map in order to fill yeah. in all the squares. Because in order to leave the dungeon, you need three treasures, or you need to kill three monsters, and you get points for collecting. Anyway, this game, I think, is going to be a big yeah. deal when it comes out, and it's by KTBG, Kids yep, Table K Board Games. Now, and still, also, so I think it's potentially, you know, a top-tier, two-person, head-to-head game. But you, I made you go buy a two-person, head-to-head board game. Yes. <laughs> and I, I did, I, I made him. Yes. I, I did make him do it. Forced. Twist yes. my arm. I oh, did. get a new board game, yeah, buy, buy a board game. Buy a board game. Well, what, what game was that? This was a game called Wizard's Grimoire. Wizard of the Grimoire. Of the Grimoire. Or Listen as I call this. it, Pew Pew Bookie Book, because that is the most generic name ever, and I can't claim it 
uh, so very wrong about games. They coined that, and I stole it from them. But. Well, and, and the box is a grimoire. Yeah, it's with a little a book. magnetic closure. Very they they had him at Magnet. So, yeah, I love mag. You know I love Magnets. So this is a head-to-head -head dueling mm. wizard game with cards that have... You need mana to power your spells. You're drafting spells from a marketplace, and you're creating... It's an engine-building wizard battle game. Yep. Quick, it's fast, you just, just beat them up, and it's different every single time. Great artwork. Yeah, there's really a, good artwork. A big pile, just in the base game, there's a big mm -hmm. pile of spells. So, just like you say, every game is completely yep. different, because, you know, you're not going to see the same spells combinations but, to over but they're totally again. manageable, because you're, you're capped at six spells. Yep. So even though you got to maybe have to stop and read what the spells do, you get your engine going, and it's just running, it goes great. And actually, Kevin and I, we played the expansion yesterday, because they have some prototypes of that. Which is, it's a standalone, mm -hmm. but it has a diff different set of spells. They do slightly different things. They're a little more complicated. They're spells that chain off of other spells specifically. Oh, nice combos. Yeah, it's very, very cool. But in addition to Lair, there's two other games I really wanted to talk about. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to start with one that I've played both days now. And that is called Illiterati. And this is a game that I backed on Kickstarter. It's from... Uh, Gap Closure Games, mm -hmm. and I don't know, I've had it sitting on my shelf for 18 months, and I say, you know what, there's a doctor here, he probably likes words, I'm bringing this game, and so you're working together to spell words, you have three minutes to spell words, these random tiles you get, and you have specific categories of uh, words you have to spell, like it might be, have three words, that each have a certain color tile in it, and they have to spell fruit, different fruits. Yes, we had one where you had to have, all your words had to start with the same letter, or uh, yeah, the, the, the final one that we played was, was we had to name fast food yeah, fast food as chains. quickly as possible. Yeah, and so oh my it gosh. Just, it, and you know, that doesn't sound exciting, but it is, if you like words, and you like putting things together, and word games and cooperative, and it also has this cool thing where every round, the if you don't use enough of your letters, you advance the end game because if you fail to use enough letters four times, you lose. But they have the bad guys, the illiterati, mm -hmm, who, who are burning books. Yeah, yeah, they're burning books, and it's right out. There. They're from Florida, everybody. <laughs> Too soon? Oh, Too soon? Maybe. Yeah, uh, but they are attacking you every round, and so they're making you break up your words that you're trying to carry over and do things. It, oh my gosh! With the sand timer that's counting down, so there's pressure, and you've got just a big jumble of letters in the middle of the table. Uh, the version that you had, the deluxe version, has amazing components. Mm, yeah. You know, and I'm sure even the retail version be has the large cards with great art, like they're yeah. tarot-sized yeah. cards, uh, and fantastic artwork on there. But the deluxe version has the fancy bag yeah. that you're drawing the letters from, and the the letters are wooden chits, uh, yeah, which are super great. nice, they're like great. tactile. Yeah. Very cool game. It's fast. I, I just I I really like it. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it, I really, really like it. If you like words, it's, it, it's a must buy. I, I concur. Yep. I concur. A very good word game. All right. Speaking of, uh, what's the word on your next game you want to talk about? <laughs> well, it's kind of a pun, really. This is a game that we, at the very end of the night, and, and we were talking about ages last night and how old we both are, and I am way too old to be playing games yeah. until 2 a.m. Yeah, I stayed it up was, until it 2 a.m. You know, when my kids were babies. Oh. That's 20 years ago. Yeah, it, 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 it was rough. Now, the fun thing, before he tells you what it was, we were playing a Tesseract yesterday, which we forgot about. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yep. Another, I've talked about Tesseract a lot, but we were just uh, doing a game, and the guy who was running it said, oh, you should go check out that game over there. And he told us a theme about it. And I immediately, because I already knew how to play Tesseract, and Brian and Kevin didn't. Uh -huh. So while he was being taught, I was on my phone. I was emailing the publisher. I'm like, hey, I'd kind of like to review this, maybe. And I'm getting a copy. I'm super excited about it. But why don't you tell them, tell them about it? It is super exciting. Uh, so the person who taught us how to play this game is one of the co-designers yeah, of, of Dead the, of Winter. Yep, de, yep, Dead of Winter. Yeah. Dead of Winter. I remembered that yep. right. 2 a.m. Yeah, remember, Gilmore. this is when we're playing these games. It's at 2 o'clock in the morning. This is a game called Collab. Uh, and it, the title is a pun because you are mad scientists working in a shared lab and you're Maybe not, you were mad. You're not, I was perfectly sane. You're not cooperating with each other, but you do wind up sharing resources. So you're placing these beautiful components. And here's another game. Yeah, where yeah this, this, the, this, was the, 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 this was the deluxe. But I the, don't know what the retail has, but it was 
<laughs> the miniatures the were not like a miniature. They're like four inches tall. They're like G.I. Joe like, size. You can hold it in, yeah. in your fist, these minis, uh, of the scientists. And then you've got minions that carry dice. So it's a dice placement uh, game. There's resource management. Tableau building. A tableau building. You, you, you can earn huge points. There's wooden levers that you're pulling yeah. in your, in like your tableau. Like mad scientist things. And it's you're... very oh, cool. The yeah. art is cool. The minis mm -hmm. are cool. The board was like a puzzle. Yep. And the board upgrades as you play through the game. Uh, just an incredible, incredible, yeah. what a great experience. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so yeah, we, we, we are babbling about this because we were very tired and we only played about a third of a game right. before we, we called it because it was late. But for me, this game hits all of my buzzwords. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's got a, it's a silly theme, right? You know, it's playing but on But a great later. theme. Yeah, like oh it's this shared office space basically. And it's, you know, sometimes like, oh, I'm a mad scientist, but his minions here. I'm like, hey, 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 go do this thing for me now. You know, it's all so your silly theme, the great art, uh -huh. but it's got tableau building. Tableau building is my favorite. If I had to pick one favorite mechanic, that's my right. favorite mechanic. It's got dice chucking. Uh -huh. I just, I am so excited about it. It's got a solo mode. You can play co-op also, which I, I that blows my mind. Yep. I'm very excited to try that. Yep. And. The designer was super nice. Oh, he was very yeah. cool. And to show us that he was in the middle of doing an, another game yeah. with his friends and family, yeah. and he came over to show us this one uh, and, and said, hey, if you guys aren't finished by the time I leave, just leave the game over there. Yeah, it's just his hide it under this table. Yes, it's his He's only so copy. generous and kind <laughs> with his time and his game. Yeah. It's his only copy. Um, just, you know, super nice guy. You'd think he was Canadian. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> see, you see, this is how you know I'm the nice one, because here right. he is throwing out barbs like that. Constantly. Unbelievable. Constantly. Unbelievable. But yeah, I, I, I'm very excited about it. I haven't played, obviously didn't play a full game. No. But I'm very excited about it, this it, It's one I want to play again yeah. for sure. So I'm going to keep an eye out for CoLab with a capital L. CoLab. I get uh, it. Fantastic. I get it. I see, fantastic I see, I see, I see what they did there. Right? I get right? It. I get Plus, we played, you know, we, well, we, we lost two games of Tesseract, as oh, we yeah. mentioned. Yeah, horribly. We played the base version, the retail box of Marvel United. Yep. Yesterday. Uh, the base version of Thunder Road Vendetta. Thunder Road Vendetta. About. What um, a madhouse that game is. Yeah, we, uh, we, we may have bullied Brian a little bit in that. Just a little <laughs> yeah, bit, yeah. yeah. Well, I definitely lost that game. <laughs> I, I've, all my cars got. Uh, anyway, I think Thunder Road Vendetta is funny because I, a friend of mine has a garage on Thunder Road. So and that's he has a he vendetta against Brian. And so he does. It works out he does. We have vendettas yeah. against each other. So uh, that's day two. We played games for 18 hours. Yeah, forever. Well, and we've had a really good dinner in the middle. Yes, yeah, we, we did. We went to a wonderful steakhouse, had a great experience. Yeah. Our wives met each other. Uh, and now we're going to go play some more games. That's right. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you tell the folks how to find you? You can find me on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram. Though YouTube's where I do most of my work. Uh, just Hungry Gamer is a big old picture of me doing this. Hard to miss it, hard to not, not figure it out, but I cover everything you could want. And we're even going to have this guy on our uh, Boards and Brews podcast to talk about this convention in a couple weeks after we get back. Absolutely. And now if you have any comments or questions, you can leave them in the comments section below the video or you can email me at brian at brainsongames.ca. Brainsongames.ca is the website. That's where future episodes will go. Previous ones are up there already. Brains on Games is the Twitter handle and the Facebook page and the Instagram feed. So we're all over the place. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to be notified of future ones, you can head on over to YouTube and click that subscribe button. And smash the bell. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Hopefully we will see you very soon. Bye.